Welcome in to your weekly GA show, Lorna Porca, here on WLR, with thanks to PWC Waterford. Tomás McCarthy here till 7 o'clock. Well, this week, the summer of 1998, is the focus on another Hurling in the Year special. Bewitched were number one in the charts with C'est La Vie. France won the World Cup on home soil. The Tour de France visited Waterford. And the Dacia Hurlers pulled off a stunning Munster semi-final victory over Tipperary. Waterford greats Sean Cullinan and Stephen Frampton will relive that famous win at Parky Cueve. While later in the hour, Rowan Moore's Gavin O'Brien and GA referee Thomas Welch will tell us about their fundraising efforts for Pieta House. Down towards Kerwin, the full forward. Will he take on Ryan? He's got to go uh, round him or get it back to Dan Shanahan. Shanahan in front of the goal, puts it over the bar. Fergal Hartley to John Lahey. Nice pick up by Lahey. A quick look up and a good score. It just came so natural to him. But, uh, every time uh, Tip get that ball in towards uh, Declan Ryan, the big man, and O'Neill and Cahill, you fear that there are scores coming. Well, there's a score coming this end too. It came from Paul Flynn and what a beautiful score it was. Three frees and one from play now for Paul Flynn. He is once again their main scoring hope. Looking for Declan Ryan, the big man who turns away from it. Cullinan was there with the pull. Ryan and uh, O'Neill. And it's gone in. Goal to Tipperary. In the last minute of the first half. A time when all counties love to score. Not getting quite uh, the length into his puck out that he did in the first half. Ken McGrath. Could he make a run here? I'll just go for a score. He just goes for the score and gets it. Good one by Ken McGrath. He needed that. Into Billy O'Sullivan. Billy O'Sullivan to get round his man, perhaps. Off his left hand side. Point for the taking. Gets it. Billy O'Sullivan to score. It's really going well for him now. Landers is coming out. Is it flicked in? Yes, it is. Goal. Connor Gleason, the man who got it for Tipperary. Against the run of play. Out of the blue. Out of the blue and goals. And it's over. And Waterford have won it. Their joy is unconfined in Porky Cleave. The dynamic DCs have done it. A glory day. Well, on June 7th, 1998, Waterford defeated Tipperary 21 points to 2 12 at Porky Cueve. And the Dacia captain on that afternoon was Stephen Frampton. And delighted to say that the Ballygunner defender joins him on the line now. And um, Stephen, what did, that, what did a win like that mean to a player like yourself who'd experienced some? Painful defeats with Waterford during the nineties. Ah, yeah, it was it was massive, um, Tom. To be honest, it, you know we we had we had gotten off to a great start that year. Uh, Gerald McCarthy had had come in, and and um, really things were starting to change uh, around Waterford hurling, and and the standards and everything had had started to to be lifted, and and performances started to improve, and. We 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 started off the year actually. I remember as well. We won the South East uh, or the Waterford Bristol League as it was at the time, South East League, um, in in whatever it was, Feb- January or February in Welsh Park. So um, and and we we had a really good win in the league or sorry, run in the league and lost the league final. So you know we were looking forward to the the uh, the championship with uh, a bit of optimism and a bit of confidence and and. Uh, that's how it turned out, you know. We we we, we got off to a, a great start against Tipperary, and and I suppose winning against the the so-called uh, one of the the big traditional counties was was a massive boost. It really was huge, you know. Whether it was Cork or Tipperary, who who were the traditionalists at the time, it was just a great win, and and um, it, it it was magnificent. There was it was great excitement around the the whole county. Uh, as a result of it, you know, so it, it, it was, it was very memorable times. Yeah, like and only three years earlier, Stephen, like Tip had beaten Waterford by twenty-one points at the same venue, and you were talking to Vincent Hogan after the match, and uh, you said that you said that this wipes out the bad memories. You said for me, it makes up for eleven years of put downs. Like, did, did a win like yeah, that really yeah. put pride back into the Waterford jersey? Do you think? Yeah, absolutely. And look, you know the way. The way it had worked prior to that, I think it was the year before, maybe two years before, was the first time of the. Uh, you tell me this now, the first time at the back door. So up to up to then, it was it was all knockout. So 
you know, we we had a we had a, f- a few really good performances in the early nineties against uh, top teams. I remember playing against Cork and Thurles and losing narrowly, and uh, um, Cork going on to win All Irelands. And and really, the only the only um, championship win that I had had uh, of note, I suppose, prior to that, was we had beaten Clare um, in I think it was ninety three. 90, or maybe 92 or 94 it wasn't 93 N- 92 um, yeah 92 yeah and and you know the next time we won a championship match Clare had gone and won, won in All-Ireland in 95 so that just gives you an idea of you know how difficult it was to kind of to get any sort of momentum or to to build any sort of head of steam uh, in a championship where it was knockout so it kind of um, it, it, it was just very difficult back then you know and very few matches, so it, it was, it, you know, that 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 breakthrough that day was was massive, and and really, since that time, um, you know, Waterford have haven't looked back and have have really, you know, pushed on and and become um, one of the one of the powerhouses of of Munster hurling, and uh, we, you know, hopefully we'll we'll stay there, um, and that that'll that'll be seen as one of the. Uh, the catalyst to, to Waterford getting there with with the best of, of the teams. Yeah, and we, and we we all know about uh, the tight dressing rooms in the old Parky Cueve. Uh, Stephen, what was the atmosphere like in there afterwards? After it was it was great. You know, it was a massive sense of of relief, really. Um, but yeah, like we, we were divided into two dressing rooms in actual fact because the dressing rooms were so small. But uh, and and probably three showers with. Uh, only one work. <laughs> Jenny. <laughs> but, uh, that was, yeah, that was, that was, that was, that was the setup back then. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a different uh, setup down there now. It's fabulous, you know. But uh, look, it, it, yes, we, it, it, there was massive excitement. It was, it was fantastic, and and you could even, you could feel the crowd that day. Like it was palpable. Like they, you know, the the excitement and and it had been building, you know, with the good uh, league run that we had, and. You know, I suppose new management brings that as well to a certain extent. But you know, this was real excitement that we were we were starting to go places, and and uh, so it was, yeah, it was it was a it was a huge day. It was a day that you you're not inclined to forget too easy. Yeah, can can you talk to me about your own build up to the match, uh, Stephen? Because I was I was reading that uh, your wife gave birth to to one of your daughters on on that weekend. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit, a bit of a. Can't remember too much because it was a bit of a whirlwind of a weekend. Um, you know, we had, we had been um, up in uh, Alkeen Hospital or WRH uh, for a long time on, <laughs> from Friday night. I think it was the whole way through. Um, so it, it it probably wasn't ideal preparation for a Munster Championship. No, match. and I had, I had a little bit of a, a calf injury as well going into the match. So. But look, I think those things, you know, uh, hindsight is a great thing, but uh, those things afterwards you say, well, maybe that was a great distraction to have that. But uh, no, it was a, it was a tough build-up. Uh, my daughter Emma was born. And, and I'd have to mention as well uh, two fabulous supporters of Waterford that brought me actually from the hotel after the meal directly home uh, to Waterford, bypassing their own Dungarvan um, that Sunday night to, to come back to the, the hospital to my wife Anne-Marie. Um, Tom McCarthy, who's still a massive uh, influence in Club Dacia and a, and a massive man for in in Waterford Hurling, and Tom Cossey as well um, from Dungarvan, they were they were good enough to throw me in the back of their car and and bring me back to Waterford. Um, I, I obviously was in a bit of a rush to get back to see how uh, however t- everybody was. So uh, very memorable, you know. It was it just uh, it was. A uh, bit of a blur, but uh, but very memorable and some lovely memories as well from that that weekend. Yeah, so so you you kind of double cause for for celebration that 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 day, Stephen, ah, yeah. and yeah, 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 too exhausted now to, to celebrate, but um, <laughs> but uh, you know, celebrated in my own way. You know, it was uh, it was it was it was a fantastic weekend. Yeah, and like to, to this day, Stephen, like Waterford supporters will still talk about uh, the shoulder you gave John Lahey during that game what do you recall about that particular incident yeah I don't a lot of people say to me and um, a lot of people say to me even still you're right and uh, I, I look I don't 
I, I I'm not great at rem- I I do remember that my my job that day was to like look John Lahey was a fabulous hurler and and one of the the best forwards in the country and and um, Jerry McCarthy had given given me the role of of marking him that day so I knew it was going to be um, it could go either way yeah <laughs> it was a topsy turvy yeah. type of uh, a job to have because it, it could get uh, it, it 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 could it could be a colourful day or, you know, you don't know what's going to happen with, with John. Like, he was a fabulous hurler and and, uh, and he brought a lot to the game and, and in, in every different way, to be quite honest. But, look, I, I was prepared for, for a, a bit of a battle and, and look, we, 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 we gave ourselves, we, we hopped off each other and we we battled the whole day and, and um, it, it, that's just, that's, you know, if that's hurling, that's the way it is. You're given a job, and, and that's what you do. And and um, uh, it's you know, thanks. It worked out for for Waterford in the day, and and um, you know, we 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 got to a, a monster final. So yeah, big battle. But look, that's that's the job you're you're put out there to do. You know. Yeah, I was reading one of the the, the local papers, the report that they put together after the game, Stephen. And they said it was one of your your finest hours in a Waterford shirt like did you feel as, as captain that you kind of had to take that game by the scruff of the neck that day um, I, I suppose yeah it's kind of you know a, a, a captain in those days probably wasn't as uh, prominent should I say a, a role as it probably would these days I mean you do your interviews afterwards as captain uh, but you know it, it, you're probably only one of the players um you know, on the field, but I suppose you, you do like to, I suppose, not have a bad game and have a good solid game if you're captain. So you know that pressure is on you the whole time. But um, yeah, so look, it, it 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 worked out to be a good day for me. Like, but uh, um, you know, it, it, like I I was really only a part of of whatever uh, eighteen or nineteen players there that day. But I, I was delighted it went well. But I, I as I said. It's it's not it's not as prominent a role as it would be in the modern day today, uh, being captain, you know. Um, so, but you know, it, it it was nice to get to get the pat on the back and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think you were up there with Paul Flynn for for man of the match. He got ten points that day, Stephen. So that you must you must have played fairly well that day, anyway. Yeah, well, I, I actually, there's, you know, I had to laugh. I had to laugh at that afterwards. It, it was funny because. Um, I I got I got an award from the the people that were sponsoring. I get I I actually I get the the Mickey taken out of me for it ever since. But I got an award for a monthly award for the people that sponsored the the All Stars in those days, Aircell. Uh, so I got the award for that match, and Paul got the man of the match. But I remember it was ironic that uh, Peter Finnerty was. Uh, on the television analysis that day and he kind of had a little bit of a, a dig or a bit of a go at me because of the way that I dealt with uh, John Lahey. Uh, right. And I just thought it was ironic because uh, like Peter Finnerty was a wing back uh, and he wasn't he wasn't the most um, shall we say I, and I do, I, I'm not putting him down he was a fabulous wing back and part of a Galway half back line that were Outstanding in the in the eighties, but he wasn't exactly um, a polished, uh, nice, gentle hurler. He was quite the opposite. He was his, his game was all about aggression and and uh, giving a fella a rough ride. Yeah, he so he, he, he he could mix it as well with the best he, of them. Yeah, so but it was ironic that he kind of um, he commented on it on the on the Sunday game that night that um, that I was lucky to kind of get away with with stuff that day. Uh, I just thought it was ironic that that he he. He'd come out with that, yeah, given yeah. his uh, his own track record. But um, no, look, Paul Paul was outstanding that day as well, um, and he rightly so got man of the match, you know. But um, uh, yeah, look, great great memories as I said before, and and um, great team there as well. Great, I, I thought that team probably deserved a little bit more uh, at the end of that year, uh, and maybe the, the following couple of years. But look, you know, you don't always get what you deserve, and and um, uh, you know, we we've we stayed pretty close to the top since then. So you know, it, it was a good launching pad, as I said before. Yeah. How do you reflect now, Stephen, on how the rest of the year panned out? You obviously had those two battles with Clare, 
down in Torles. He beat Galway in the All Ireland quarter final in Crow Park by, yeah. by ten points, and then lost out in the All Ireland semi final Kenny by a single point. Yeah, look, you know, hindsight is is a fabulous thing, you know, and you can, you know, I, I like, I, I'm kind of uh, easy going enough about it, but in in hindsight, we probably could have won the the Munster final the first day. Uh, I I I'd still put my house on on um, on on Paul to to stick a, the the free over the bar in the last minute. Um, and and he would kind of ninety nine times out of a hundred. So that was unfortunate. And the replay was was I have to say the replay was a horrible experience. And and that he you know that goes down in history as as whatever happened on that that second day. Um, you know, and again I'll go back to hindsight. You know, losing to Kilkenny was was very disappointing because. I, like Kilkenny lost the final then again, and I I think if we had gotten over Kilkenny, and I think that was that is that was nothing to do with what happened on the field. That was a psychological thing. It was all very new to us, and we just didn't kind of. I'd say we didn't realise we were good enough um, to get to that All Ireland final because it was so new to us, and 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 really, you know, it it like. We just lacked experience at that level, and I'd I put it down to that. Really, they, these are not excuse, they are excuses, but they're not, you know, I think they're relevant excuses. It was just a pity we didn't get over that line because we would have had Offaly in the in the All Ireland final, and Offaly wouldn't have been a, a team. Offaly were a fantastic team, and again, around that time. But we wouldn't have had any psychological issues playing against Offaly. We would have given as good as we got, in other words, in the All Ireland final. But look, they're all big ifs and ifs and so whatever. We just didn't make it, so it's disappointing. But look, that's 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 sport. That's uh, that's what keeps us all going to it every Sunday, or not not at the moment anyway. But no, uh, later on the year, you know. But um, that's that's the way it is, you know. We we weren't good enough to beat Kilkenny. Um, uh, on the day, but you know, we, maybe on another day we might have, you know. Yeah, and 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 just going back to that, the the second Clare match, you mentioned Stephen that it was a, a horrible experience uh, for you. Was it completely different from any other match that you you'd experienced before? That kind of toxic atmosphere uh, that was in Torles that day. Yeah, it was, and and you know, uh, it just yeah, it it was, it was very. Contrived and a, and a, and a, as you said, a, a toxic atmosphere, uh, and that was all brought uh, brought in by um, by Gerlach Nan. I, I think, to be quite honest, uh, I think they were a bit surprised and upset with with uh, with us from the first day, or so they said, uh, and that we nearly beat them. And and um, um, I just. Uh, I, I, like it, it, some of the stuff that went on before the match and and you know on the pitch before the match, uh, just wasn't wasn't what you'd expect, you know. And and like you know, hurling was tough and all that kind of stuff. But uh, I just thought it was uh, over. Up, but look, you know that's that's all kind of goes down in history. Like we we lost the Munster final, unfortunately, after a replay. But uh, it, it that that was kind of. It was disappointing, and it wasn't. It, it it wasn't very enjoyable. Like you can, you can talk about what happened, but it it just wasn't a very enjoyable experience at all, really. You know. Mm. And, and and just a final question for you, Stephen. You've been really good with your time uh, this evening. Um, obviously, like this Sunday, Waterford were due to play Tipperary in Welsh Park, and you're involved with with Liam Cahill's uh, backroom team at the moment. Like the GA announced yeah. this week that there'll be no inter county activity until October. At the earliest, like how optimistic would you be at this stage that we we will have a championship in twenty twenty? Um, look, we we have to stay optimistic, uh, Tomas. To be honest, and 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 we and I am genuinely optimistic that we will have a, a championship. Albeit it'll be very strange times. It'll be in October with <laughs> with uh, muddy pitches, probably. But look, that's that's uh, that's the, that's what we have to put up with. I mean, we're in very unusual times, so. It is what it is. It's going to be very difficult to to prepare teams for a championship as we would have known it. If you know what I mean. Mm. Uh, now the, the championship is is going to be a knockout championship uh, when it does come along. So it could be 
very, very strange, very unusual, and maybe something a bit uh, novel to have a, a championship. Maybe, uh, well, not maybe, under lights uh, in the middle of October or, and November. So it'll it'll be very, very different, um, and it'll it'll it's going to create its own issues and problems, you know, uh, with players back in college and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but look, um, everybody's going to be in the same boat. Uh, I, we're, we're certainly looking forward to getting back together at some stage, uh, maybe after the club uh, scene. But I, I think it, I think it definitely will go ahead. I think you know we as a country have have really embraced uh, the whole the whole pandemic really and dealt with it really, really well. And I hope that we'll get ahead of ourselves over the next month or so, um, and we'll have we'll have been seen to have dealt with it very well and and uh, and come out of it as quickly as possible. I, I, I'm hoping that's the case. It, it looks like that is the case at the moment, but I suppose we, we can't get ahead of ourselves um, at this stage. It's a serious, it's a serious situation, uh, way more serious than any sport, and um, hopefully we will see the end of it very soon because I think everybody has put in a massive effort and has shown great commitment to to, the, to Ireland's cause, basically. And... Um, you know, at least we we might have something to shout and roar and scream about in in uh, October, well, September with the club championships, and then October, November with the inter county championships. Exactly. Yeah. F- f- fingers crossed on on that front, Stephen. Thanks yeah. a million for your time. Great to get your memories of that famous win over Tipperary in uh, ninety eight. Uh, take care, and we'll catch up with you again very soon. Okay. Thanks, Tomas. Now you're hurling, Lorna Porca with Tomas McCarthy on WLR. Thanks to PWC Waterford.